Canadian Navy. The Royal Canadian Navy, since the outbreak of war, has grown into a powerful force, designed especially for escort duty, for the task of escorting the convoys of the United Nations to the fronts of a world in arms. From Canada's coasts move convoys of Canadian war supplies. Pitted against them, the wolf packs of Hitler's U-boats. Charged with the task of combating the U-boat is the Corvette, fastest maneuvering weapon of attack. North to the Arctic, Mamance and the White Sea. The bridge of Allied shipping spans frozen latitudes to our Russian ally. Seamen wonder sometimes, driving north in the cold watches between enemy attack. Do people back home know what it means? Storm and fog, even the elements are enemies, with death like an armed man standing guard. Was there ever a house in the quiet street where I once lived? Do children still play in the sun? Here only is the enemy the horizon, and the sea. The work of Canada's Navy never ends. Convoys do not retreat when the enemy attacks or withdraw to new positions. The convoys sail on, having no choice and wishing no other. History is in the making through Canada's growing sea power. As Canada's sea power grows, new ships and new men are training in the coastal waters. The men who will sail the ships built and building in Canadian shipyards. Captain of our new corvette, he's 27 and was formerly an interior decorator in Victoria. Number one was a lawyer in Edmonton. Our navigator pilot is from Toronto. our ASDIC officer from Vancouver. ASDIC, that's the new submarine detector device. With it, he can hear the beat of a sub's engines deep in the sea. At ports on east and west coasts, fleets of U-boat hunters are gathering. Ships light, fast, maneuverable. The corvette is trim, almost yacht-like. Sleek lines cunningly camouflaged to blend with sea and sky. And packing a punch potent beyond proportion to size, the corvette is a highly mobile weapon of destruction. With her speed and sturdy construction swinging into attack, a pattern of depth charges rolled off the deck will crush the hull of an enemy sub like an eggshell between sudden terrifying blasts. Each new ship is another weapon in the Battle of the Seven Seas. Already the Canadian Navy escorts nearly half of all Atlantic convoys of the United Nations. 12,000 ships handled 65 million tons of wartime shipping, battened it down and carried it safely through the danger zone. Only by sea routes can we feed and supply our fighting men. There are no safe subterranean tunnels to the front lines. The planes to bomb Berlin 
tanks that crush Hitler in Russia must be ferried from arsenals an ocean's width away. And the men who drive those tanks, who follow in the transports and trucks of mechanized war, nurses, doctors, technicians, men to fly those planes must be convoyed with all the speed safety will allow. In the harbor, the convoy ships ride at anchor, while the captains meet in a secret conference to receive last-minute instructions. Each movement must be planned and exactly coordinated. For the first time, the Navy reveals how carefully convoys are organized. Back in! The roll of ships is called. Each captain answers for his vessel. Bavaria! Uh, gentlemen, has every master his sailing orders, please. Look out as much as you can afford at all angles as laid down there. And if you see anything that doesn't belong in the convoy, please report it to the Commodore and escort immediately. And now, gentlemen, I introduce you to your Commodore, Admiral Sir Francis Austin, Steamship Silesia. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. I'm very glad to meet nearly all the captains uh, sailing the convoy with me. I, I hope that you will realize that the signals I make are not made for my own pleasure or or for fun, or just because I have not, nothing better to do. Every signal I make, either to an inv individual ship or general convoy, is an effort to ensure the safety of the convoy. And I just once more ask for cooperation. Happy to turn to us all. Now, gentlemen, I introduce you to the senior officer of escort, Lieutenant Horncastle, <coughs> HMS Witherington. I can very little to add to what the Commodore and the MTSO have said. If you see any of the escorts hoist a black pennant or a red flag in a black cone, that means they're about to attack or they've got a contact. See if you can keep out of their way and uh, you'll know that probably a death charge is coming fairly soon. A black pennant or a red flag and a black cone. We ask you to keep up in station in a compact body and I'm sure that they'll give you the proper protection. And we wish you a uh, bon voyage and happy landing. For three years, the Armadas have been gliding past the citadel of Halifax. City of war, front door to the Battle of the Atlantic. From Halifax have gone the convoys loaded with the products of war. Ships of every type and tonnage fit for sea are used, pressed into service in the struggle for survival and liberation. These are combined convoys. The escort vessels may be United States cruisers, Dutch, Norwegian, British. The ships are of all registries. Liberty ships now building in U.S. yards at the rate of more than one a day. Even a whaler. Through its stern, whales were once hauled. And sailing in separate troop convoys are the faster ships, the giant liners. leads the escort vessel. Hovering above the laden freighters are the Catalina flying boats. Atlantic rise with sudden elemental violence. Its speed is reduced. We move only as fast as the slowest ship. The convoy plunges on. 
Campaigns do not wait on weather. While the storm lasts, hazards and dangers double. Ships must be kept in line by the escort vessels, lest they drop behind, lashed into isolation by the turbulence of the sea. And then, after a long night and a day, the force of the gale drops. The convoy moves on, ships in order, and lines unbroken. Life at sea means learning to live together. In the rough democracy of the forecastle, feuds are forgotten before the face of common danger and the common foe. Machine gunner Joe nurses his ambition, getting the U-13. Foremost in our minds is the threat of submarines. From the senior ship comes a signal. Fog moving up. Fog, deadly enemy and sometime friend, on occasion a means of escape during attack. But more imminent still is the possibility of collision. The danger of crashing into another ship grows ever more real. On the Commodore ship, Sir Francis Austin, who said at the captain's meeting that he does not make signals for fun, sets his officers to the job of keeping the ships closed up. Almost we prefer storm, at least we can see. Now we edge along by dead reckoning. We wait, trying to pierce the gloom for the signal light that will come as the fog begins to lift. Flashing light ahead, sir! And then, suddenly the signal, light dead ahead. Speed increases, the engines rev up, contact established. The fog is lifting and the message passes down the long lines of ships. Fog clearing. watches, the ship's company relaxes during what seamen call make and mend sessions. Above the deck, the lookout stands his constant vigil, on guard for that telltale wake, the glint in the sea that will send us to battle stations in 25 seconds. Danger, danger all about us. From the senior ship, a message flickers. Submarine in the vicinity, carry out a sweep. That sound on the Aztec detector, the engines of a submarine. I have a contact, sir. Our officer has picked up the beat of a sub cruising under the surface. If we locate the sub's position, our corvette will swing directly for it, hurling depth charges as we go. Even try to ram the raider if possible. Hang on to it, follow it, don't lose it. We're coming about. Closer now. Definitely a sub, sir, quite close to us. That's it, keep after it. We'll swing right over and start blasting. Action! 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 I stood to my gun. 
I couldn't see the sub yet. All around me, men were running to their positions. Port throwers were closed up. Attack pennant. The warning. We're closing up. The sub has slipped inside the line of ships. Emergency speed for attack. And the engines pick it up. Number one gun on target. The sub's got one of our ships. Stand by depth charges. Roll charges in order. There goes the underwater blast. Now the surface explosion. We drop them above and below the sub. Fire three. From side as well as stern, we're slinging the charges until our pattern covers that sub. Gotta wait now. Did we get it? Or did it get away? Was the setting right? She might sink and we'll never see her. Subsurfacing off starboard beam. Double service, we're in green, I know. Open fire, independent, fire! That's funny. What's wrong? They don't return our fire. What's orders, sir? Stand by, hold your fire. They seem to be surrendering. Keep them covered. Fire across the bow. That one's right across her nose. They're quitting. They're quitting. They're giving up. I don't know. They could be faking. But if one of those babies makes a false move, we're ready. Number one takes over the boarding party. Start the ball. Flip. Go to A, sir. His instructions. Take as many prisoners as possible. Shoot if you have to. Get their code books. And above all, prevent scuttling. We want that sub intact. Eddie, this may be a trick. Watch yourself. She may try to crash dive. All right, get them aft. Push them back toward the stern. Give it to them if they resist. Get up on that conning tower. Go on, up with you. Come on. No. No. She blow up. She blow up. Set a time bomb to prevent capture. She'll likely blow any minute. Number one is going down. They didn't take any chances. They've scuttled her as well. We keep them covered. Number one's still inside. He'd better come up. There's not much time left. She's beginning to sink. You'd better come up, sir. She's settling fast. Swim for it. Get to the boats, quick. Every man, jump for it. One minute to get clear before she blows. She's down by the stern and sinking fast. goes with another Nazi who hung on too long. We count noses when the boarding party returns. No casualties. Five prisoners taken. Good news lays out to all escort vessels. Successful attack. Submarine captured and sunk. One more enemy you both lies at the bottom of the sea. And from the senior ship comes a signal rewarding successful attack. Well met and well done. On all the oceans of the globe, 
fighting seamen are bringing the convoy safely through. Doing its part in keeping those seaways free, Canada's young Navy stands at action station, ready for sea and to engage the enemy. Thank you.